Hello and welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a truly, um, well, daunting looking puzzle that I'm going to be attempting today. A Fog of War Sudoku, which is also, is this 11 by 11? It's, uh, it's some sort of deconstruction puzzle. Um, yeah, it is 11 by 11. At least that's something. I know something about 11 by 11 grids. Um, where basically, yeah, we're going to have to locate within this grid nine three by three regions and somehow solve it using these little killer clues on the outside, which also seem to include X's, Y's and Z's or Z's, if you prefer. Um, it's called Genus 3 and it's the return of a great constructor whose puzzles I haven't seen for ages, Jeet Sampat. Um, Jeet's appeared on the channel loads of times before, but I would say it's been at least a year um, since we've even had a Jeet puzzle submitted to us. Um, and, and I will tell you that, well, we, we did send this to testers. Only one of our testers managed to finish it. Uh, they did describe it as very, very hard and it took them a long time. So this might be a very long video. And if it is, I apologize or, well, frankly, it sounds like I, I should be pleased if I can get through it at all. I'm starting this quite early today so uh, if it is a very long video that should be that should still be fine. Phone's already buzzing at me. Um, anyway, anyway we will get to the rules of this puzzle in a second or two. What do I have to tell you? Well we're going to be streaming, I'm really excited about this stream, um, on Tuesday night at 10 p.m. UK time. Love to have your company. We're going to be streaming a game called Islands of Insight. Let me show you a, a little teaser for that. Um, and it, apparently there are 10,000 puzzles in this game, so it should be absolutely great for us. The only thing that worries me a bit is, is that I do get motion sick with sort of 3D games, and this is a 3D game, um, so uh, I hope I'll be okay. We'll, we'll, we'll have to see, but, but I am looking forward to giving it a try. Um, I'll try and remember to put a link on the screen in case you're interested in joining us for that. Uh, other news over on Patreon, loads of new stuff. Um, lots of you are now watching um, my crossword uh, discussion about Dean Mayer's absolutely brilliant Sunday Times crossword from from last weekend. Um, so that that is now out because the, that competition, which was being run by the Sunday Times, has now closed. So we're we're okay to reveal the solution. Um, but if you have any love of cryptic crosswords, please do please do have a go at that puzzle. Um, and even if you don't, you might enjoy the video because there are some wonderful, wonderful clues in it. Uh, we've also, of course, got our brand new Sudoku hunt, evening attractions themed on negative constraints, um, which, which lots of you have been having a go at and enjoying. So delighted about that. That's there as well. And very soon we'll have my solve also of region geometry, Emre Kalotoglu's incredible puzzle, um, which, took me three and a half hours to solve. I hope this one won't take me three and a half hours, but that one did. Um, any other news? Yes, yes, I've got some birthdays to do today. Let me let me turn my, well, I've got birthdays and also um, a sort of wedding congratulations. Let's start with that. Tim and his fiance are getting married today, which is the 3rd of March, 3rd of the 3rd, at 3.33 p.m. <laughs> um, and there will be chocolate cake, I believe. So, Tim, I hope that, I hope you both have an absolutely brilliant day today, obviously. I hope the weather plays plays its part. And I'm delighted to see that you've got the number three at the, at the center of your wedding. Um, yeah, send us a picture. Send us a picture if you can. That would be great. Um, others are birthdays. Actually, I'll start with Tom, whose birthday I think might have been yesterday. Somehow I had it in my calendar for, for today. Um, but Tom, we had a message from your fiance, Rachel. Um, so I'm sorry if this is a day late and I hope you have had a great day yesterday probably and I hope you had chocolate cake. Um, now the next one, <laughs> we got we got this message very late and it was to, to wish Bethany's mum down there in Australia a very happy birthday today. Um, but Bethany didn't tell us her mum's name <laughs> so I, I can't even clarify it. There wasn't time but Bethany's mum, I hope you have a great birthday. I understand you're having orange and poppy seed cake which I cannot approve of but I, I hope you enjoy it anyway um, and I'm sorry I don't know your name and next Anina has turned the big 3-0 today um, over there on the west coast I know this because your boyfriend Matt wrote wrote to us um, and, and I, I think from Matt's email I understood that 
you might have moved maybe from the east coast to the west coast and and you like that the thing you really like about the west coast is it gives you more time during the day to solve cracking the cryptic puzzles which is a good <laughs> it's a good thing it's a good thing and the nina happy birthday um fleur it's your birthday over there in the netherlands and i know this because your boyfriend connor wrote to us and apparently it's become a ritual in your household to watch every night so i don't think you're alone in that but uh, thank you for watching um and then finally kimberly has turned 19 today and i know this because your best friend marielle wrote to us and asked whether i could wish you good luck with the with the weather for your late night inline skating sessions that sounds jolly adventurous and I, I do wish you the best with the weather although I will tell you that my um, yeah the weather dances I do do not tend to work as, as this winter has proved um, anyway Kimberly many happy returns now let us turn our attention to Genus 3 uh, by Jeet Sampat and I will read you the rules of this puzzle we have got um, the grid is covered in fog that hides the cells underneath it Placing correct digits will reveal surrounding cells. Now, it doesn't say this in the instruction, but take it from me because fog is something that we've done a lot of on the channel. You, the idea is that you don't just pick a cell and write the digits one to nine in it until you find the right one and therefore reveal the, the, the fog and reveal the details of the cells under the fog. It should be done logically. Um, so you should be able to deduce the value of digits underneath this fog, place a digit using logic and then develop the puzzle from there. Um, construct nine non-overlapping three by three regions in the grid containing the digits one to nine once each. So let's say we worked out that this was a three by three region. Then we would know that this region here, let's color it. Then we have to have the digits one to nine once each in that, that three by three. But we're gonna have to find nine of these in the grid. Um, now what next the rest of the grid oh the rest of the grid must be left empty okay so once we've got the nine three by threes we can sort of i don't know what we'll do black black out the rest of the grid um, because we don't have to put digits in in those cells digits must not repeat oh <laughs> i thought it was going to say along the diagonals but it doesn't it says digits must not repeat along any row or column okay well that's just sudoku isn't it um Digits on a grey thermometer must strictly increase from the bulb end. So say there was a thermometer bulb here and it's sort of, oh, I don't know how to draw this. Let's, let's try. I might be able to using the pen tool that let's say there was a thermometer in the grid that did this. Then digits have to increase as we move away from the bulb. So if this was a one, this could be two or three or more, etc. And we could keep going up just as mercury rises as uh, the temperature rises on a real thermometer, so our digits must rise on a Sudoku thermometer. Um, now, the sum of digits along a diagonal indicated by a clue outside the grid must satisfy either the given inequality or the corresponding relationship with other such clues. So, uh, Okay, so we've got a clue here that says less than 23. So these four cells, oh, well, it might not be those four cells. It depends where the three by threes are, because <laughs> it's possible. Well, it's possible, actually, that there's no, uh, it might actually be possible that there's no overlap, that there are no three by threes covering these cells, in which case they will always sum to less than 23. That seems unlikely, but it is possible. Um, but imagine there was, imagine there was a three by three here and imagine there was a three by three here. Uh, now all of these cells would contain digits in the finished puzzle and those digits would have to sum to less than 23. Um, now there are also, I have noticed clues that have letters in them. So we've got an X minus five here. And then we've got an X plus five here. So let's just, yeah, they don't overlap, look. So, yeah, we've got 131, 131 minus three X there. So somehow or other, we're gonna have to work out the value of X and then make sure that all of these equations for the, the diagonals involving X work. 
which sounds incredibly worrying. Do have a go though, the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play Let's Get Cracking. And the only the good thing about this puzzle in terms of at least starting it is because this is an 11 by 11 grid, it is square. I didn't check that the column, the columns, no, the, yeah, it is definitely 11 by 11. Um, I can tell you immediately something about certain cells in this grid. So let me highlight some cells. Um, I'll probably get the wrong ones, but I think it's these. That, for that, that sort of matrix of cells I've just highlighted there. All of those cells, all of these green cells are definitely, definitely have numbers in them. They definitely are part of a three by three box um, in the finished puzzle. And there's, there's a few ways of proving that. Um, but the, the sort of the beautiful way that I'm aware of is the pigeonhole principle. And what the pigeonhole principle says is, let's imagine that we were going to plonk a three by three box somewhere in this grid. Is it possible to plonk that box in the grid without overlapping one of these green cells? And by simple inspection, you can see it's impossible. There is nowhere, you, there is no three by three uh, of gray cells remaining. So when we plonk a three by three box uh, into this puzzle anywhere, we'll definitely overlap a green cell and we'll only overlap one green cell because these green cells are so far away from one another that you can't overlap two green cells with one three by three box. So the first three by three box that we plonk in will overlap exactly one of these green cells. But because boxes can't overlap, that's, let's say it was this one that was taken up, let's say that was a box. Then the, the net, but there are nine three by three boxes we have to plonk in. So the next three by three box we'll plonk, have to plonk in, we'll have to overlap another box, another, another one of these uh, green cells because it can't overlap this one because the boxes can't overlap. And so by the time we've put nine boxes into the grid, we will have to consume each each three by three box will overlap with exactly one of these cells. And there you go, QED. So uh, I don't know what that means, but that is almost certainly what we're expected to know to start the puzzle. Uh, now I'm wondering whether what we have to do here is sort of do a hex cells thing and um, highlight all these diagonals must be it must be this one mustn't it 131 minus 3x and I know that I know that two of the cells on that diagonal but x Well, hmm, x has to be bigger than 5. <laughs> Is that actually even true? If x was 5, then that one would be a 0. And it could be a 0. Look, it's not clipping any of the green cells. That would be a 10. And that would be 116. That's probably impossible, actually. 100, yeah, 116. I mean, even if I put nines into every single one of those cells, there's only that would only make 72. Um, and I probably can't put nines into those squares because obviously they'd all have to be in different three by three boxes. That's not going to work. So actually, X is a fair, it's a bigger number, isn't it? It's a bigger number. I mean, if all of these were in three by three boxes and we maxed them all out, this is quite a difficult question to work out how many nines you could have along this diagonal. Uh, you want as many as you can. So something like Ah, it's going to be quite difficult. Oh, and that, that's really broken the top as well. Um, 
Okay, I might that might not work, so I might have to do that. Oh, okay, that's pro. That is going to be approximately right, isn't it? So there are one, two, three, four, five different three by three boxes there. So that's five nines and an eight and an eight and a seven. So it's forty five. Uh, 61, 68. So 68 is the maximum value of these squares. Um, approximately. Yeah, I'm not saying that's absolutely definitely right, but it's approximately right. So now I need 100. So I need 32. I need 63 divided by 3, if my maths is right there, which probably isn't. But 21. X is at least 21. Is that helpful? X is at least 21. No. <laughs> That's just not helpful at all. Oh dear. Okay, sorry. This is just not right. Uh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay, sorry. Let me... Um, Hang on, 6 minus z. But, ah, okay, sorry, this one will be where we're meant to look. 6 minus, that, that's got a completely different property because that's saying z can't be big because there are two digits on, we can't have negative values in this puzzle. So the minimum value of those two squares would be 1, wouldn't it? Ah, oh, didn't mean to do that. I forgot that that would clear fog. Oh, so I, I mean, it didn't actually reveal anything of any use. Uh, I said, no, it didn't really. But I, I mustn't do that because that that was not an earned, an earned, um, earned deduction. So these these could be as low as one. We now know one is one, but we're not going to use that logic. Um, and the maximum size of Z is therefore four. We got any other Z clues? No. Oh no, we've got actual Z. Oh. Ah. Okay. So there are not many. There are not many. Sort of live digits on these two diagonals because Z can't be big. Z has a maximum value of four. Oh, I see. No. 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 Right. Ah. Okay, uh, I'm going to change change tack altogether. Let's use uh, the diagonal thingy. I see what's going on for once. These squares. Let's make them all purple. Well, these two diagonals, all of the green cells on these two diagonals together, sum up to six, don't they? Because six minus z plus z is just six. Well, that's quite interesting because those two are definitely live and those two are definitely live. And the minimum these can be, they have to be different, is one and two. And the minimum these can be is one and two. So that's that's immediately, well, that's massive because now, um, well, now there, there, is, there are no more live digits along the purple lines. So we can simply um, shade all of these in, in a color that says that we switch them off look at this so now well mm, so now oh, it won't let me highlight them I was going to try and turn these clues off ah because basically the purple line now the the Z clue and the six minus Z clue are finished we can't do any more with them So, maybe I'm meant to, golly gosh, I don't really know what I'm meant to do. What, 52 minus Y, oopsie, has two black cells on it. I've seen that. 
and there's a y there. So the sum of those, uh, yeah, okay, let's just have a look at that together again then. It's, it's suspicious to me that we can add up the diagonals and sort of cancel out the, the variable, if you see what I mean. So we know that the live cells on the two yellow diagonals sum to 52, because together the diagonals, uh, well, 52 minus y plus y is just 52. 52 is quite a lot. Fifty-two is quite a lot, isn't it? So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight cells. Oh no, well, that's useless actually. Well, not useless, but it's not it's not even particularly high. It would be useful if some of these were black, definitely. But if they're all green, then it's not useful. Well, it's 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 a little high for an average 52 divided by 8 just under 7 isn't it so it's a little high but it's not very high well that's quite interesting if if all of these are all of these orange squares are definitely in then this square is the top of a 3 by 3 box look same as this one same with this one same with this one then there's a lot of symmetry in the grid that oh okay hmm. i don't i don't then know what you do with the middle bits but Yeah, okay, so there's something going on, I think, with the Y clues. I'm going to have a look at the um, the X clues as well as a, as a set. Let's have a look at them all together. See where they're overlapping. Yeah, you see that one's going through two, the, these two green clues, which are one and two. Although they could both be the same flavour. That one is not going through anything of any use. But we've, we don't know anything about x minus 5 diagonal. This big one is the one we've looked at. Uh, okay, well that now can't be quite as big as before. Because when I maxed it out, I, all of the green digits I put in, I was making 9s, 8s and 7s. So x is going to be a bit bigger. than what was it 21 I said so x is a bit bigger than 21 oh, there's so many degrees of freedom along these x diagonals oh, there's another one here x minus 5 um So, so the only thing I'm seeing there is that if, if we add up all of the purple cells together, then the X is again a cancelling out. So we, on one side we'd have 3X minus 5, on the other side we'd have 131 minus 3X. So we'd end up with 126, wouldn't we? So all of the cells on the purple diagonals add up to 126, irrespective of what x is. 126. I mean, how are we ever going to get to that? I don't know. I'm just going to check these others as well because I've got. I've got. Oh, these are. The, I don't think this is relevant because I don't. I don't know. I don't know that any of the cells on that diagonal are actually in the grid. 
And there's another one down here, greater than 32. And that does include, an, uh, that includes two orange cells. Okay, oh dear, I'm not seeing this at all. Um, I've, I've drawn, I've made some very pretty patterns. Why is that purple? Why is that purple? How did I get this to be purple? What does purple even mean? Did I, did I just misclick it or something? I'm not sure. I don't understand why that's purple. Mavericks flying. Mavericks become much busier the last few days. Um, golly gosh, I mean, I just don't know what to do at all. Oh. Are there some cells now? Just wondering with the, this sort of northwest border for this one, are there certain cells in the bottom in this part of the grid that now must be in this one's bailiwick? Uh, no. <laughs> wow, no is definitely the answer. No, that's not right. Okay, so that was a silly thought. Um, this one. Yeah, that one's under a bit of pressure. That can only go... Oh, maybe I can only take one of these. Maybe only one of these squares gets uh, included in Y on the orange. Because what I've just seen is this. The 3x3 three three that is accompany an accompaniment to this cell is either exactly those cells or it's exactly these cells because of these two black, um, black dots. Sort of, we can't overlap this 3x3 three three region with these two black dots. So it either goes that way. Uh, which would force that one actually and that one golly gosh actually this if this goes up here that that would be part of a region that would be part of a region this would be part of a region this would be a region I think if it goes this way, we're going to get all but, maybe all, no, oh yeah, no, we are, we're going to get, ah, we get almost every single region decided. That looks interesting, there's only... Right, this is wrong. <laughs> right, this is wrong. <laughs> because if this was right, uh, I don't really know how to show this. Um, hopefully you can see, I, I've outlined, you can see the cells I've, sh I've highlighted. That, that's forced three by three boxes. Look at the orange squares that, are, that remain highlighted or d that don't remain highlighted, that aren't part of the blue outlined region. There's a cell here a cell here, a cell here, and a cell here. So there are four cells on the orange di on the Y diagonals that don't contain digits. But we know that the Y diagonals overall add up to 52. So even if I put nines into the orange cells that will count, I'd only get four nines, which is 36. It's not the same as 52, knowledge bomb. So this cannot be correct. And this has to go this way. So that is a region in this puzzle. And therefore, we need to consider how to show that. Should we have it blue? Uh, we could outline it. Let's outline it. 
there we go that is our first three by three box now now look at this square now that must go down there mustn't it so those three digits are definitely in the puzzle um yeah okay and the, the, that must be the true for this as well i think if that if this one goes this way don't i get the same thing let me just check that i get that 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 yeah and on this lower diagonal i've only got two counting oranges and on the top diagonal i've only got two counting oranges so this also has to go this way which means these squares are definitely in we can outline this region so we've got two regions now at least i've not sniffed a digit have i not really well apart from that one um Okay. I don't I don't know. Maybe it works for that one as well. If I take those. Yeah, well that's that's fascinating. As fascinating if it propagates, which it which it does. That's beautiful. Right. You can't it's, so it's the same actually for all of these none of these can move none of these can have their three by three box in the middle of the grid because this one is the same if, if you put it there you can see this this cell and this cell are not part of three by three boxes and because you've put it there in the middle this one has to go there and this one has to go there and these two don't count and that cannot be right so this one goes up here which is another bit now that's going to be good because that's locked something into the top left of the grid look at this green one here that's a new region that we've never we've never seen before I'll make it green so it's distinct from blue we're probably going to have to think about the coloring in due course as well of everything so that it doesn't get too crazy now that's this one having to go up means i think that this can't go up either yeah it's the same logic so this one has to go down so that's a region, which means this is a region, which means that we can outline these, like this and this. Now, now look, there's loads of things I can see here for a moment. Look, this is black, 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 this is black. They all can't be part of three by threes. And all of a sudden, I feel like we might have a chance to solve this puzzle. Um, let's think about this now. So. Hmm, what does that mean? I've now definitely got, oh, okay, well, I've, de I've now definitely got four digits um, on the orange diagonals, but they actually can't all be nines, because if that was a nine, that would have to be an eight at maximum. So the maximum at the moment that I've got in, in orange counting is going to be eight, nine pairs, which will give us 34. And I've got to get up to 52. Uh, it's not going to be too difficult actually so i only need 18 more so i could have just two nines hmm. oh i've never seen this clue there's a clue here i've never seen greater than 16 oh my goodness sorry This is probably going to be where I should have started the puzzle. Um, although I don't know. Gr oh, greater than 16. Oh, no, that's actually... Okay, that cannot be relevant, can it? 
until we find out there's virtually nothing on this diagonal. That feels like a complete fool's errand. G greater than 17. Sorry, there's another one up here. Okay, we can make the grid even <laughs> look even more like a sort of complicated geometry problem. Um, which it is in a way, but Right, so what on earth do we do now? I suspect... Ah, ah, right. We said I, ne I said I needed 18 more, didn't I? So if this goes down like that, am I not going to just... Yeah, that doesn't work. That's really interesting. So this, um, we've been looking at this sort of pushing pushing three by three boxes into the middle. If you push this three by three box into the middle, one associated with this green cell, that's fabulous for these two cells, which definitely join their friends with, with counting digits in. But it is not fabulous for these two which don't get into three by three boxes at all. And the maximum these can be is not double nine because they're in the same box of the Sudoku. The maximum they could be would be an eight, nine pair. And that's that's not enough. So the three by three box associated with this it, it has to go a little bit to the northeast. So it is not that. But could it be something like that, for example? Well, it, uh, now I'm going to claim it actually has to be that. Yeah, I think this is right. I mean, if... Um, We've worked out this doesn't go southwest as far as it can, because that stops this one overlapping with this one. So, so that rules out this configuration. Now there are actually only other two. There are only two other configurations of this because we've sort of got a staircase going up from the southwest to the northeast in the grid. You know the three by three boxes all they, they have to. They keep having to perform along this staircase, don't they? So this one either goes there exactly, which is great, that overlaps with two oranges, or it goes right into the top right of the grid, where these two could never be reached by another three by three box. This one can't get to these two. So these would be out, and we know that's impossible. We can't make this double nine, because we can't overlap these two cells into two different three by three boxes. So, this does that and by symmetry i'm going to claim probably this does that as well if this oh no that might not be right because maybe this no that's fine that's fine because if, if you do push this one up upwards like that there's not enough room for this one to fit in it couldn't fit into the it's, there's no three by three it's got available to it so this one can't go into the bottom left it needs to therefore overlap there, like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to get my colours wrong here. I think, and there's just enough room for that one to sit in the middle of the grid, and that is the configuration of all of the boxes. So let us outline these. At least we've got somewhere. It's taken a long time to even get to this point, and we can we can therefore blacken everything that is not on these, <laughs> this is quality, isn't it? And now, well, now I can get rid of my orange and I think I will do that. I was, I was thinking what I should do now is to change the color scheme because I know people don't like the blue digits on the blue background. So maybe I could go I can get rid of green in the middle. The green in the middle were just my, my early deductions, weren't they? 
And now I should change blue to be a friendlier color, maybe orange. That, that looks quite good. Maybe green could be a better color as well. I'm just thinking about the color of the digits. I mean, that feels, I can see that blue on the green background. I, uh, the other options might be, no, purple would be horrible with the orange. I thought, oh, what we could do is go light green, maybe. That might be better. Although I think some people find the light green and the blue difficult to distinguish, but I, I think I'll try that for a bit, if that's all right. Um, right, so what do we now know? Well, well, the funny thing is that all the pressures come off the Y diagonals now because we've got plenty of digits. We have got eight digits that we're using. So, oh, greater than seven, uh, the greater than 17 diagonals only got three cells on it. And the greater than 16 diagonal has only got three cells on it. So the combined, yeah, okay. So the combined digits there, if we say that the greater than 16 only added up to 18, greater than 17 only added up to 18, and we said the greater than 16 only added up to 17, then these six cells would have to add up to, thir oh, that's still, that's still not, there's still no pressure. They have to add up to at least 35. I was wondering whether we could do something with the fact that obviously these can't both be maxed out then, but it's it's easy. I mean, these, these could all be eights and nines and we get to 51, which is a lot higher than 35. Oh, Bobbins, and what was there? We worked out some mathematics, didn't we, on the... on the X diagonal. Um, so on the X diagonal, we, we, yeah, okay, well, that, ah, okay, so we have, the X diagonals are the purple cells. And there are quite a few purple cells now that are not, oh, is that, I don't know what that noise is, I hope that's not my hard drive. The recording's still going, isn't it? Um, the, quite a lot of purple cells that are no longer have that no longer have any digits in them at all so what was the was it 126 we thought so the purple cells that count add up to 126 That's, that is interesting actually because these squares we know add up to exactly six because they've got to be different this is a one two pair this is a one two pair so we actually the rest of the purple cells add up to 120 ah, that's it that's it that's beautiful that's it we've done it well i'm not saying we've done the puzzle but what is the maximum i can make those four squares add up to well i could make them six seven eight and nine and that would be 30 and i can put that into every every box and by symmetry you can see they've all got four free purple squares in so that that is what we must do all of these squares isn't that beautiful are maxed at six seven eight and nine now i was about to say now No, it's a bit different. I was about to delete all my purple lines, but I think that is probably not right to do. There is still a, some interplay, isn't there? If we, if we knew exactly what X was, it would definitely help us to fill this diagonal in. So, I, yeah, I, I feel it would be wrong to, to delete all of the purple lines now, although they've definitely, they've been useful as a set considered together. Um, I 
Oh, right, okay, so now the Y, now my Y diagonals have got less degrees of freedom <laughs> because the Y diagonals together, remember, they add up to 52. But now that square can't be bigger oh this is this is gorgeous yeah look, look the sort of points of the compass these squares here on yellow well obviously i could in theory make this five but if i make this five i can't also make this five so the maximum value of these squares is four five pairs and four and five that's, that's two lots so that's 18 yeah, that's it. That's it. That's just gorgeous. Gee, this is absolutely gorgeous. Because now, if the if the if the points of the compass are maxed out with four or five pairs for eighteen, we still need another thirty-four to get yellow to add up to enough. And how do we get thirty-four when we've only got these squares to play with? Well, these have to be eight, nine pairs. And now, hmm. well, now I'm very skeptical that Y does anything else because. I mean, obviously, if we knew why, if somebody came along and said, well, Y is uh, what would be a useful number? Y is 25. Then we would be able to say that these were double four because we know that these must be 17. So these would have to add up to eight. But who is going to tell us what Y is? Y, y, y is just going to fall out and the four or five pairs being opposite one another on the diagonal is going to sort of determine the value of the 52 minus Y at the same time. So it's only Sudoku that's going to figure this out for us. That feels right, so I'm going to get rid of yellow. I hope that's not an incorrect deduction, but that feels right to me. I cannot see how those clues provide us any more, any more information on how we're going to solve the puzzle. Um... Wow, okay. Right, oh, thank goodness. 47 minutes, I've got a digit. 47 minutes it's taken me to get a digit. Okay, but now we might be away because I know what that digit is. And that's because this column needs a three and this row needs a three. And we can see the three for both of those things must be in one of these three squares and at the same time in one of those three squares. So it must be here. That is our first digit. And, ah, oh, no way. Oh, did it, is it, I mean, it's obviously not revealed any anything behind the fog. That didn't, sort of seems to be a is that um i see what's happening is the fog is darkening the green and when i get the three it just it undarken it because it removes the fog the the shade of green looks a bit lighter that's absolutely that's so distressing uh right but these squares now are high digits aren't they they're six seven eight and nine because that's what we've not put into this column in this row. There's a lot of symmetry now. These squares, therefore, are 1, 2, 4, and 5. Ah, now. So now we might be meant to look at the, the, um, the greater than 17 and the greater than 60. Yeah, this is quite interesting, because these clues now can't be eights and nines anymore so the maximum they can now be is sixes and sevens so sixes and sevens what do we say we needed greater than 17 is 18 greater than 16 is 17 so we need at least 35 
and we've got at the moment a maximum of 26 so we need another nine at least so this is beautiful these are sixes and sevens these have to add up to nine to get us to the absolute minimum that the greater than 17 and greater than 16 clues are so these squares become not four and five they are one and two and now now i think we might have to retain the greater than 17 and greater than 16. i know that this is a 17 diagonal uh, i don't know that these are different do i uh, i'm not sure greater than so this this is a 17 exactly yeah so if this was five they could be double six if it's four then these are different okay um what now got loads of low digits in this box i mean I might as well pencil mark it one two four and five and the same must be true by symmetry up there one two four and five i uh, know i was about to say where's three in this box that's not a sensible question oh hang on one two four and five where's three <laughs> that's so strange i've managed to miss out three poor three i'm so sorry no three is also a valid digit that's not six seven eight or nine so threes go into these squares three is in one of these squares what's this one greater than 32 but we could have double nine and double five which is already going to be 28 so these don't really have to be very high at all if that was true and there's hardly any there's hardly any information in this puzzle about these corner boxes boxes what i'll call boxes one and nine i mean the only thing i can see obviously there's some sudoku that we can do I was just wondering if I could do that, but I, I can't, don't see how to do it. Uh, and this one has a small overlap with the less than 23 clue. So if these were both minimumed at 6, these would be 12. Uh, this would have to be a maximum of 10. That still means you could put a 9-1 pair in. So, so at the moment, all digits are available. So which it's sort of very, it's very difficult to see which clues I've not used actually. I probably am going to have to color things, I suspect. The only other thought I've had is that I've got, I can see I've got a lot of high digits in this row. I've got three of the four high digits. Yeah, okay, I think I'm going to pencil mark even more fully. So these only include one digit that's high. Uh, this is same here isn't it same here one two three four and five and wow goodness me i mean i can't see anything obvious why do we Oh, I, I took the thing out of Y because I could see that the compass points were going to determine it. Um, the, I mean, the only other thought I was having, just to 
just so that you are aware of where my brain was going is that in deconstruction puzzles you can always perform this sort of set type trick to prove that these digits and these digits have to all be different um, and the way to understand that is to say okay the total contents of these three boxes are obviously three sets of the digits one to nine aren't they because each box will have the digits one to nine once each now this box well if we look at this row that's one set of the digits one to nine and look at this row that's another set of the digits one to nine so the balance the leftover the rump cells which are these and these must be the third set of the digits one to nine to make sure that the three boxes overall have have the correct composition and that's nearly interesting you can see there that there's one high digit to come in these three squares so if that was there then these would all be low because in the column that would be interesting I mean that trick's going on the I think the symmetry though is just not helping us uh, in, we're going to get the same sort of thing going on in there in I want to say in there you can see in each of these little strips of all different digits that I'm finding I've got three high digits I've got one more to place and the same will probably be true in there yeah one two three high digits there's one high digit to come up here So, okay, let's think about colouring then. How we, on earth are we going to colour this puzzle? And where do we start with the colouring? Ones and twos. Let's click. Why won't it? Oh, I see. It's When I click on the ones and twos, it's highlighting every cell that's got a one or a two in it, which includes a lot of cells that have three, four, and five as well. I, I just want these ones. Yeah, and the annoying thing about those ones, I might be missing something here, but I don't think we can colour these against one another. I can colour the compass point ones against each other, but I can't colour those into the middle box. Um, ooh, starting to get the fear now. Um, Ah, sorry. If you can see what to do, well done. Is it going to be... I don't know. I haven't got anything at the moment, I'm afraid. <laughs> I just feel like I've totally hit a brick wall. Um, I don't... I almost think I've missed something in the clues around the edge. I don't understand how I'm ever going to do this. What is it that I might have missed? I don't know. Uh, I can see those two digits have to be different. Otherwise that is to say this was a six, you couldn't put it in the middle box anymore. Um, <laughs> uh, I 
So maybe maybe I'll colour that one. If I colour that one in blue, then blue is in one of those squares. Is that helpful in any manner or means? This square is then not blue. So that square is something else. Let's make that pur oh, purple. It's really hard to see. I can't make that purple. Make it gray. If, um, so these two now are gray. They are gray blue pair, aren't they? these two squares are something else um, and they are the same as those two squares Oh dear, sorry about this. I am totally bamboozled. X plus, X plus 5. I don't know. I don't know what I'm meant to be doing here, I have to say. These two squares, let's colour those in. Let's make those green and... I might have to use purple because I'm not sure what else I could I could try yellow. So if I make these yellow and green, these two become yellow and green. So okay, so what I could do is just say that's yellow. I'll just designate it as yellow. So at least I get the colour of these ones determined. But I don't know which way round they go in the middle box. So the okay, so those four squares are all different and they add up to 30. And they are on the diagonals that add up to x minus 5. So if we add up both of the x minus 5 diagonals, we get 2x minus 10. Right, so 2x minus 10 is even. And 30 is even. So these squares add up to an even number. <laughs> That's the world's worst deduction. Um, hmm, okay. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. Um, is this somehow in any way obvious at this point? I suspect there might be a way of extending this colouring, but it's very far from clear to me how to do that. Two X minus ten. Thirty. Yeah, maybe maybe we have to compare this diagonal. Yeah, I suppose what I can do now is I can get a maximum and minimum value for x, can't I? Using the x minus 5 diagonals. Yeah, okay, so let's try that. So if I... Yeah, that's quite interesting. So the absolute minimum I could put on the x minus 5 diagonals is not 30 plus 4 sixes. Because if all of these were 6, you can't put 6 in the middle box anymore. But 
we could, I think we could have three sixes and a seven possibly. Maybe that's possible. So the minimum would be 28, you know, three, six, no, 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 25. 25 plus 30, which is 55. And that's equal to, but that's not, nah, but that's not, e that's not even, is it? We need something that's even. And we've already said that. So we're going to have to increase that by one. So 56. So 2x, 2x minus 10 equals 56. So x equals 33. 66 divided by 2. So x equals 33 or higher. But the maximum value of x could be if these were three nines and an eight. But three nines and an eight is also an odd number. So we have to go three nines and a seven, which is 34. 34 and 30 is 64 plus 10, 74, 37. So X is between 33 and 37 now. Um, and on this diagonal, X plus five. So X plus five is at least 38 and a maximum of 42. Oh, well, that's that's it. Right. OK, goodness me. That's that was very hard to see. I was looking at these saying, but they can only add up to 30. No, these don't have to be different, do they? But they do have to be different. These two have to be different and those two have to be different. So the absolute minimum value of those two or well, maximum value, sorry, would be if we went eight, nine pair. The maximum value of those would be if we went eight, nine pair. So that's 30. Now, no, it's not. Sorry, that's 34. Um, and then we need to, we were heading for 38, weren't we? Because we had 33 was the minimum from the 2x minus 10 diagonals. We got x was 33 to 37. So we need 38 here. And we've got 34 plus double 2 is where we're going to go. Oh! Oh, well, that was, they were correct, and they cleared fog, which is a good thing. That is a very good thing. No. Well, yes, that means I get two ones in the grid as well. This is, I love the way that when I get a digit, I can get two digits. And you can see the, the, the underneath of the fog is gradually is, is lightening the colours we've got in the grid somewhat. Now, but there's more we can do with this, isn't there? Because on the x minus 5 diagonals, we had the way that I got to 33 was by minimizing these digits. Although mm, I said they couldn't be three sixes and a seven because that was an odd number. So the minimum they are is three sixes and an eight. So we can take nine out of all of these, definitely. None of them can be nine. And there have to be lots of sixes in them, or at least some sixes. So they can't include nine. If there was an eight, there would be three sixes. But if there was no eight, then I think because we need an even total, we've got to go two sixes and two sevens. So we've either, right, so we've either got two sixes and two sevens or three sixes and an eight into, right, we should, these, these need their own color, don't they, obviously. Those purple ones, that's what they are. They are under pressure in the Freddie Mercury sense. Now, Right, well, that one is not eight because that's got eight and nine looking at it. 
so we can tidy up a tiny bit of pencil marking in these squares. And the same is going to be true, not in that one, in this one, look. So we can take these out. Now it would be fascinating to know whether these are... See, imagine that these were the same digit. Oh no, it would be better actually if these were different digits. If we could prove these were different digits, then we would know 8 couldn't be involved in the purple cells at all, because we would have a 6 and a 7. Yeah, can I, can I actually do that? That might, I'm, I'm going to now remove my purple highlighting. I'm just wondering because I can, I can, I know that this digit is in one of those two. So I know these two are different. So doesn't that mean these two are different? Surely it does. Yeah, in effect, what we're saying is because green is here, green is not there, so green is here. So that's a free digit we've just got. And similarly, because this is grey, grey is in one of these, that is not grey, so that's grey. And that's perfect, because now these are different digits. And if these are different digits, 8 cannot be involved in, in the, what were our purple squares. Now, now how do we colour these two 6s and 7s now? I don't know, actually. Um, I bet you there's a way. Oh, well, we, we also, actually, we know they're different, don't we? That's quite an interesting thing. So I'd better try and record that somewhere. I'll make one of these A and one of these B. They have to be different. Because if they were the same, we'd, we'd have an odd total for these, these four cells. And we know that's impossible because we know that um, the two x minus 5 diagonals together add up to an even total. This puzzle is not got any easier. I mean, think back to the start of it when we didn't know where the boxes were, and you sort of thought if you got the boxes, you'd be happy. And I was happy, but an hour and 12 minutes in, and I am, well, I'm making very slow progress, but I'm so far away from finishing this, it's not true. So, um, we could color eights and nines, maybe? Don't know how easy that's going to be though. I'm not even sure I can do that actually. Oh well, hmm. I can a bit, perhaps. I can colour th these against each other, I think. Because that one, by using the set theory, um, so let's try that. So we'll make that one, I'll make that one purple. Now what I'm claiming is, because these three boxes are three sets of the digits one to nine, and these two columns are two sets of the digits one to nine, that this must be a third set of the digits one to nine. In other words, this, this cannot be purple or it would repeat within the purple set. So this is the other digit, which means these two are the same colour. So we will make those... Ah, uh, ah. Uh, well... So these, these are... Oh, I've just realised that now I've got two colours for my highs, haven't I? Because I've got... I've got... Oh, 
Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. No, okay, I'm going to just let me unwind a bit. Just let me unwind a bit for a moment. I'm not going to color this just for a second. Because don't I know that because I know gray is in one of those and gray is six or seven and green is six or seven. This square is not six or seven. So yellow is eight or nine. And because I know that green is six or seven and gray is six or seven, blue is eight or nine. So actually what I really need to be able to do is to shade this blue or yellow. And what did we say? We said we knew these two were the same. So these are either both blue or they're both yellow. I don't know, that's really annoying. Same is true down here, isn't it? So maybe I'm meant to start with this one. Or is that is that silly? No, oh, I don't know. I don't know how to do this. I think I might have to... I might take these two colours out, you know. Much as it pains me. Um, uh, and the reason is that I want to colour these against each other without polluting my brain with thinking about these two. This might, this might not be sensible, but I'm going to try it. So I'm going to say one of those is grey, which is true. One of these is green. Uh, the other one is yellow. That was the other colour we were using. So we'll go like that. So that's true. I've got an 8 or a 9 here, which is akin to this one, and an 8 or a 9 here, which is akin to this one. But, but I, because I can colour these against these, I'm now going to try and do that. So what we said was that this digit, which I can now make blue, for example, is not the same as this digit. Is that what we said? That is what we said. So it is the same as that digit. And these two are the same. So we will make those yellow. Now, now, yeah, what I was, this is what I was thinking. Um, I can perform the same set trick, can't I, on these squares? In other words, this and this are the same. Uh, it's one set of the digits, one to nine. And that means blue, this is not blue. So that one is yellow. This one is blue. Uh, <laughs> you rotten puzzle. You, this is so rotten if this death stops now. I mean, I now know yellow is in one of those. I might be able to do something with that diagonal. I'll come back to that in a moment. Let me just think about this. I don't know. I mean, blue is in one of those. Yellow is in one of these by Sudoku, that is. If I knew what color this was, it would be very helpful. And I think I can do the same sorts of things up here. This column needs a yellow. This column needs a blue. And what do we need? Ah, okay. So um, can we color these? Ah, yeah, look, I can color this six or seven. Ah, I hadn't seen that. That's exciting. So that's got to be gray. And this one, therefore, is green. Oh, botheration. Well, OK, but can we do that along here as well then? So green has to appear in this stripe. So that's there's a green down there. And what's the last one? Grey. Grey needs to appear in this stripe. So there's a grey up here. I 
I know these two are different, but I don't know what the color is. Gray has to appear in the extra set here. So gray is in one of those. Um, green has to appear in one of those. So green is at the top. Yeah, but it must be difficult, isn't it? If this, this is less than 23. So the maximum size of these squares is 22 as a set and the minimum size of those is 14 as a set so the maximum size of these is 8 but what ah but that can't be a 1 so that's at least a 2 so the maximum size of this is 6 and that's jolly annoying. But it can't, okay, it can't be yellow because yellow is eight or nine and yellow is simply too large. So that square loses a little bit of freedom from that. Ah, beautiful, got it. Right, that square Is this right? I'm, uh, well, when I did it in my head just now, I thought it was right. I'm not sure. Uh, I was going to say the only way that this could be green and be a high number. Um, I When I say high number, I mean a six, seven, eight or nine. The only way that could be true is if this was a low digit. And uh, well, not just a low digit, an exact digit equal to six. But if that was if that was a six, then this also needed to be six. So these should be the same color. But this digit to be six would be gray and this digit cannot be gray. It would be green. So these would be at least a six and a seven plus an eight is 21 plus at least a two is 23. It doesn't work. This And that feels totally deliberate, doesn't it? That definitely feels like that's been designed. So in fact, these oh, ah, whoopsie whoopsie. Uh, I wanted to say, oh, goodness me. Well, so the, oh, what on earth is going on now? Oh, it's because of the, oh, goodness, everything's gone wrong. I want to say that these squares are a yellow-green pair. So they are high digits, six, seven, eight, or nine. But this digit cannot be high now. That is one, two, three, four, or five although it's not two. Okay. And that might be important, but why? Okay, this is not blue, because if that was blue, again, that's eight or nine, isn't it? And this is gonna break the bank again, so that's not blue. So blue is right up there. And this digit is not a high digit. So that's one, two, three. That's two, three. In fact, look, I've got a one here I've not used. These can't be ones. I bet I haven't done the twos either. Oh, goodness. Right. OK, let's do this because this might be important. I can take ones out of here, one out of here. So one is in one of two places in what I'll call box three. Two can come out of all of those squares and these squares and this square. So we're going to get a similar pattern look for twos. So two in this box is, is again, the symmetry is really amazing, isn't it? And and this digit was the interesting one because that digit it, it can't be a high digit so that's got to be a low digit and now this row has a lot of low digits in it we've got well in fact we've got a two three four five quadruple of low digits so this digit is a high digit 
And the only high digit it can be by colouring is grey. So that is another free... Wah! I didn't... I wanted to just make that grey. Oh, hang on. Oh, I see. Uh, I've got... I shouldn't have used grey for my sixes and sevens. It was a totally daft choice, wasn't it? Um, let me try and correct all this. So this is grey. That is true. It is six or seven. These digits lose their greyification. So, ah, and that's going to, right, that's great because that allows me to colour this digit. So this digit is whatever we had for not grey. So that's, that's the green digit. And we know this is different from this. So this is the grey digit. Now, well, now what does that mean? That must mean something good. Because, okay, if that's green, that's not green, is it? So that's got to be yellow, and yellow was an 8 or a 9 digit. So this digit up here is the green digit, which is the 6 or the 7 digit. And that digit's now colourable. So suddenly the yellows, now we can colour this digit blue, which is quite exciting. And that digit's yellow. Uh, I know, <laughs> it is quite exciting. Oh look, we could have got that anyway. I didn't see that using the power of this thing down here. So all of this made a, may be totally irrelevant. Um, but I, I'm enjoying it. Now. What does this mean? I really would like to just carry on colouring all of these. All of these high digits somehow. So that's all we have to do uh, is colour my high digits just a little bit more. I know that's eight or nine. See, the big game in town is this one, isn't it? If I could get that one. I haven't, uh, have I made a boo-boo? No, it was the internal ones, isn't it, that had to be even set. That feel that does feel okay. I think that's all right. A and B. How long have I had? I've, got, oh, I've nearly had an hour and a half. Um, but still no nearer to actually cracking the puzzle. But do I know? I know, I know, I worked out that X was 33, didn't I? Yeah, I did. So th maybe this diagonal is where I'm meant to look. I haven't thought about this diagonal in the context of X being 33. So 33, so 30, so 3X is 99. So I think what we need is 32, and we've got, ah, does that mean these, nah. It means these, these probably are all different, and they add up to 30, but they might not be all different. They could be something like two sixes and two nines, couldn't they? But I, know, I do know those four digits add up to 30. Golly gosh, okay. Um, uh, right, that digit is a low digit, isn't it? Yeah, we've only got one more high. Both of these are in fact low digits, so we might as well label them up. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I think that's got to be a blue digit. I need another high digit in this row, I think. So I think it's got to be there. Oh, whoopsie. So that means that isn't blue. Now, what does that mean for this set then? So this set, ah, ah, here's something I hadn't seen. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. Okay, look at um, this set. We are, they're all different. 
and that's got a 6, 7 in it. So that is the other, which is grey, which means I can colour this one at long last. That's got to be green. And I think there's something more I can say, because I thought of something else. Yeah, in this set, um, I haven't had blue yet. Where do I put blue? It must be this little digit, mustn't it? So we've suddenly learnt something quite profound about that digit. So that's got to be blue. This is a low digit. This is an 8 or a 9 digit. And now I've got, now I can shade this one. That's got to be yellow. Now, in the middle box, these are the yellow ones. So this must include the blue one. This is a six or a seven um, because it sees an eight, nine pair and therefore it is gray, which means that's not gray. Good grief, good grief. So this is yellow and is eight or nine. This is gray and is not eight or nine. That's blue by dint of the, the need to put uh, blue in this row. Now I'm sure there's some symmetry that allows us to do all of that at the bottom of the grid as well, but let's just take stock and see. Right, that's yellow, so that's definitely not yellow. That's blue, so that's definitely not blue. That's gray. So that's definitely not grey. So now it seems that we have to put blue and grey into these two. And I bet we can do the trick. Here we go. Yes, blue has appeared in the extra set already. So this one can't be a second blue and has to be the grey. So that's six or seven. This is therefore the blue, which is eight or nine. This puzzle has used every trick in the book about deconstruction, hasn't it? It really has. And we're still not done. Right, but where is where is the dark green six, seven in this column? It must be there somewhere and it can't be here. So I think it's got to be there. So these are not green. That is six or seven. And all we've got to do now is disambiguate these two, I think. Yeah, and green has already appeared in this set. So that cannot be green and it, therefore it cannot be six, seven. So it must be eight, nine. And if it's eight, nine, we know it's the yellow digit. And therefore that one is the green digit and it is six or seven and that's it this gives us a six seven here which means that, that square is the blue digit and this square is the other the, this is the green and it is not eight or nine uh, the slightly terrifying thought i've just had oh look 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 these were all different they were all different that's something that we were considering uh, if that's yellow, that's now yellow by dint of Sudoku, which is a little known technique sometimes used in these puzzles in extreme situations. All of these are little. One, two, three, four and five. Let's not forget the, the three this time. That can't be one. <laughs> and now I've coloured everything. I've got, well, I've cut, I might have to colour the low digits now, although that's probably going to be very hard to do. Um, Hmm. I can, might be able to do some some re reduction of pencil marking in those two squares. I can see. I'll think about that in a second or two. Greater than thirty-two. It's really not easy. This still is it. I thought that we'd just fill it in now. Just give me a second or two. Like, where is it? I should, where is the natural place now to look? I don't know. Well, I do know these are different now, don't I? On the on these diagonals. So that should be. Yeah, that's helpful. 
that is helpful that's going to do the fives and the fours right so so this one is greater than 17 so it's at least 18 but the maximum they can be now is 13 because they're different they are a six seven pair so i think this has to be a five it did work oh, something what's that let me just do that again I don't understand there's some sort of graphical glitch that's happened in this square that's got to be a four now we can presumably therefore do some brief amounts of sudoku by the looks of things we can get rid of four from two cells <laughs> i mean that's comedy that is comedy it's not done anything Is it or has it is there some is there something I'm missing about the implication there I know these internal purple digits were two sixes and two sevens so I can't do anything with those because I've colored them completely and that they do they do match what we were expecting um do i know what well, x minus five so this is 28 this should be isn't it shouldn't it we've got 13 uh in these two squares so these two squares add up to 15 and they are yellow and green so i know yellow and green wherever it occurs those two add up to 15 so so blue and gray add up to 15. but i don't know what blue and blue add up to <laughs> um blue and gray are there oh that's just the same sum x minus five well, well that, that does prove that the world does work um right so those two do not add up to 15 because they're blue and not gray so these so these don't add up to 15 so they either add up to 14 or 16 and they're on a diagonal that adds up to 33 at least. But that doesn't have many high digits on it, actually. If these were, if this was a 4-5 pair and this was a 4-5 pair, we'd get 18, 32. Oh, that's beautiful. It doesn't work. Just just by the skin of its teeth this is going to get us loads of high it's going to get us all the high digits okay this is the key diagonal i think so my logic is that somewhere up here which is in fact there i worked out that yellow and green add up to 15 and because i know that all of the high digits together the six seven eight and nine add up to 30 i now know that these two have to add up to 15 as well now this one is paired up with its partner that doesn't add up to 15. So, so this either adds up to 14 or 16. It's either an 8-6 pair or a 9-7 pair. Now, if I max out all of these other digits, which I think would make them all 4s and 5s, so we get 4 and 5 here, 4 and 5 here is 18, I still need at least 15 from these two. So, but to get to greater than 32... So these must be nine and seven, and that allows me to just double, oh, well, it might allow me if I, maybe, yeah, I can just double. Now, oh, I know what this is gonna do as well. If this is right, the fog is just gonna get cleared. <laughs> uh, now, what was the other one? This one, so green is now seven, and now all of the gray cells are six, and all of the yellow cells are eight, Oh, well, the eight was underwhelming. Um, right, we can probably do some more pencil marking here. I'm just trying to see. I've revealed a thermometer, a very... Ooh, oh, that was the graphical hitch. 
That was when I cleared this, I could see something sticking out. I forgot there was a thermometer in the puzzle. So there's a thermometer there, very short thermometer, so that can't be a five. And uh, wah, uh, that's really, really underwhelming, actually. Oh, I see. Right, look, I've got double nine on this diagonal now. So these squares have to add up to no more than four. So, so there must be a one in them. If this wasn't one, there would be a two and a three at least. So that's a one. Okay, and that, that, that I was wondering how I was going to do the thermo, but all of a sudden this now is three or four. So this is definitely at least equal to four or five. And we can do some more tidying up of pencil marks in the world. That this, remember the, where the one was in this box? Well, now I know where it is. Oh, well, it didn't clear any fog. Hopefully that's just because other things have cleared the fog around it, because I, I do think that was a logical deduction. That's now a one, because these can't be a one. Yeah, I mean, I have got lots of digits placed, so perhaps that's the reason I'm not getting any joy. I'm not sure. Um, right. Okay, if we look at this set of digits, no, actually just look at this column. Where's the one in this column? We can place it, it's got to be here. So these now are not one. That's not one by Sudoku. So there's a three, four, five triple in this box. Well, oh, I don't know what I did there, but uh, that means these two are a one, two pair. And in this row, I haven't put the one. So that seems to mean that's a one. And that was right. That did clear fog. So that's a two. This is not a one. So this is a one in box number four. This, ah, look, the, look, look that gets into the middle box at last. Um, okay. Five is down in this three, four, five triple. The five is at the bottom. So that's not five. This is three or four. We can think, I'm going to think about that. Maybe I think about that digit now, actually, because uh, we're on 19, aren't we? So this can't be four or five. It would, it would breach the inequality. So that is two or three. Oh, I haven't, I haven't colored this one in. That's a six. Um, and that is the gray digit, isn't it? Don't know why. My colouring went awry there, but it seems to have done. Let's double click, make sure I have got nine sixes in the grid. I do. Yeah, nine sevens. Nine nines should have nine eights as well. And I do. And I think we've also got... Well, I thought I was going to have nine ones. Let's click... Oh, for some reason it won't let me click the ones. Let me try that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's good. Right. So I should have no one pencil marks left. I probably don't. Oh, I thought I was going to get the four and five up there, but no. How can this not be resolved now? What have we got here? We've got 19. So this could be three. Oh dear, oh dear. Come on, <laughs> what do I do now? Uh, hang on. All right, yeah, there was the 32. The 32 is probably where we're meant to look. So we're on 16, aren't we? So we need the, the rest of these to add up to 17. So if I max these out at double five, these have to add up to it. Oh gosh, that's actually possible. Oh no, if I double five these, I can't put five in these, can I? And they need to get to at least seven. So I can't have two. That will, that will not work. Because the other three would all have to be five. But I think I can have three. If I had five, three here and five, four there, that would be 17 plus 16 is 33. That is enough. So 
So I'm still I'm still not done. Ah, the one throw the one three one minus so, so that x one is done. That x one is done. Yeah, all my x clues look they're all filled in. What time is it? Um So I don't know what to do. Um no. I think it's harder to perform the set trick around the middle row. I can't I can't quite see how it would work. Um oh dear, oh dear, I don't know what to do. Is it oh what about this oh no that this column is incomplete so I can't really do anything with that. Three, four, five. Twos maybe. Let's check twos. Can I do better with twos? Yeah, oh, I can do something with twos actually. Uh, because there's a two here and that can't repeat in the extra set down there. So these squares lose their twos. So there's definitely a two in one of those squares. Might as well pencil mark it in case it tells me anything. Um, there's definitely a three in this quad, in this triple in the bottom row. The three is on that that side. So these are not three. Yeah, there's probably more stuff like that that we might be able to avail ourselves of. So let's see. That's a four. Oh dear, I don't, I don't know. I think I must be missing us. Am I missing one of these clues? Uh, <laughs> which clue have I not done? <laughs> um, no. Oh, no, no. There's a four-five pair in this box. Okay, there's something. So there's a two-three pair in this box. Maybe it's. Oh, there's a two here. There we go. So it's this one. Three and two go into the grid. Three, three, two. Yeah, look, in this, this triple, there's a three, four, five triple, the three of which is on this side. So this is a two after all our hard work. And that means these are not two. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. Come on, just be kind. Be kind now. What, there's a three. Oh, there's a three in the corner. I've got a four, five pair. <laughs> That's... That's three in the corner. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Um, oh, that was exciting. So that means what exactly? I don't know. Um, what? Well, how did all this start? I got a, a two and a three here, didn't I? I've got a four and a five here. Maybe I've got to colour these fours and fives against each other. I don't... I actually don't think that's going to work. Uh, but I'm a bit stuck, so I'm going to try it. I'll try red here, and I'll try purple here. So, can we extend that? That's clearly got to be purple. Therefore, that's clearly got to be red. Therefore, this has clearly, you've guessed it, got to be purple. So purple lives in one of those squares in column three. Red. Well, red is in one of those, but red could be there. Probably. Um, purple is in one, one of those. Red is in one of these. Ah, can I get, can I get, ah, can I, look, I've got red there, so that's purple. Oh, this is just not good enough. It's not good enough. Where is purple? Oh, no, no, it is good enough. It is actually, it's do, it has done one thing, because purple in this box now is not in the bottom row. So purple is in one of those two squares, and that means that that's not purple, which means that is purple. So that's a definite d deduction. So this is a purple square now. Uh, 
Oh, I thought that was going to be really powerful. This is red by a process of purplification. <laughs> um, so red is either here or here. And either would be very useful. And it would really be very, and one of these is red. It's hard to know actually how to shade this to be, you know, efficient. It is it's hard to shade it to be efficient. Um, goodness me, and I'm still not there, am I? I've got, what digit? What clues do I have to keep track of? Oh, here's a point. Oh, well, it's lovely if this is right. I'm just thinking because these are different, they add up to nine. So on this on this diagonal now, I've only got twenty five, and I need thirty. What do I need? Thirty three. Oh. Oh, bobbins. That's that's twenty five. So I need. So I can absolutely still have, I can still have threes in one of those positions. I was thinking otherwise I could color them and that would be very nice indeed. So that's annoying. Um, <laughs> hmm. I don't know what to do with that knowledge. What do I think it's going to be? Golly, I don't know. Um, I mean, it could be that I've missed a deduction on threes. That's the other possibility. Let's click threes and see whether we can do... So the thing is, we've got so few threes in the grid. Or twos? Have I missed a deduction on twos? Yes, that can't be a two. Yeah, there we go. That's a two. That's huge. Is it really that? Oh, I feel very embarrassed about that. It does seem to be right though, doesn't it? So I get a two here, and that seems to say, and this is going to be huge, that that can't be a two. And now, that's a two, which is definitely not a purple digit. That's a two in the core, and it's right. Okay, so this is purple. This is definitely not purple. That's definitely not two. This, this is definitely not purple. So this is definitely purple. Um, well, I said it was going to be a huge deduction. Maybe that was overstating my case, but... Have I now got all the twos? One, two, three, four, five. Yes, I have. I have got them all. Um, is it exciting? <laughs> uh, is it exciting that we know? We know. What do we know? I don't know. It's got, it, it must be, I must be able to propagate the red shading a bit further. Yeah, okay, four, five. Oh, I get another three in the corner. <laughs> That's three in the corner again. That's three in the spotlight, losing its religion. Okay, so this is now a four or five, thank goodness. Which means that is now a four or five, thank goodness. Which means this is a three. Oh, I didn't clear any fog, but hopefully that's true. Um... This is a three. Oh, that's that's going to do it. That's going to do it. Because remember on this diagonal, we were worried, weren't we? Or I was worried about how I was going to get to 33. Well, now I think 25, 28, this has to be a five. And therefore, it must be a red or a purple digit. And it cannot be a purple digit. So that is a red digit. And it's five. And therefore... Well, and therefore we can double click the red digits and write five into all of them. And I think, well, that means that's a three. It means this is a red five standing by. Um, 
Uh, it means all of our purple digits are all fours. And okay, that therefore has to become a purple digit. This has to become a red, ah, a red digit. That's a four on the thermo, so that's a three, and that's going to be a red five. And this is a three, and that's going to become a purple four. And if this is right, that is one beastly clever puzzle. I filled in all the digits, I think. I don't even know. Solve counter 19. Okay, not many people have got through that. That uh, doesn't surprise me, actually. That is very hard. Um, what a puzzle. Jeet. <laughs> have you just been thinking about this puzzle for about a year and a half? Just thinking, how can I make this as, as really difficult as it's possible to be? Um, I know what I could do. I'll, just, I'll make the grid bigger and I'll cover it in fog and I'll make all the clues really, really difficult to use. <laughs> It's brilliant though, isn't it? My goodness, that is an opus edition, a magnum opus edition of Cracking the Cryptic. I know some of you do enjoy the longer videos. We, do, we don't like to do them every day because we know that, you know, they're not for everybody. But I hope once in a while, when the puzzle merits it, you'll forgive us. And I, I, I hope you'll agree. That is one extraordinary Sudoku. Goodness. Oh, I'm really relieved. <laughs> Let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.